I can relate. And I think it's we skip over that too quickly in these situations, no matter how they end. You know, I've said before one other time in this show, when I had my show canceled at NBC, I had the same feeling, the sleepless nights, like this stunned feeling of what just happened to me. Is my career entirely gone? All Everything I've worked so hard for, you know, nothing matters. Only Only this one moment seems to matter. And will it be used to destroy me? Will I emerge from this? And I, I was seeing a therapist who I'd been seeing for years. You know, I, I hired him. I went started seeing him in 2011. Um, but anyway, he offered me antidepressants, and I refused, Ilya, because the one thing I was certain of was Andy Lack was not going to put me on antidepressants. Like I, for me, that was the hard line. Like I'm, I'm not doing that. I will not give that guy that power. And for me, it's a badge of honor. There's nothing wrong with antidepressants at all. I know a lot of people for whom they've done a lot of good. But it was like in that moment, I couldn't let that happen. You know what I'm saying? It was like that to me meant something in my little private battle. So I get it. These are people don't understand the like deep emotional toll these decisions can have. And, you know, it's not so much the Twitter mob. You know, I've 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 had attacks and and you know, the kind of snark that the, the, the surreality of, of all of the online stuff, it was the fact that I might be unemployed, that my reputation would be destroyed forever over a tweet. Um, yeah. And how did I let this happen? And how am I hurting my family? Um, yeah, that was, um, that was, that was, that was pretty horrible. Then you have, so it's what, it's one thing if it's just like the Dean who's looking to CYA and you're like, okay, you know, it's like your boss is basically looking to punish you for a little while, you know, just to make himself look like he cares. That's one thing. But you had the black law students association at Georgetown demanding that your employment be rescinded. Uh, we pulled up that statement and it's, forgive me, but they demanded the revocation of your employment contract and that the uh, college, uh, condemn your quote racist tweets at Georgetown Law. Black students are haunted by the shadow of imposter syndrome. Shapiro reinforced this phenomenon by reducing black women's accomplishments and so on. It goes on. But that stuff hurts too, because now you've got whole groups of minority you know, coalitions coming together to basically condemn you as racist without any appreciation for the context or the apology or the, you know, everything that you said thereafter. Well, that's why the Dean acted as he did, uh, why he first condemned me and then why he uh, uh, put me on administrative leave and launched the investigation because uh, as administrators around the the country are, uh, they're afraid of student activist groups, which by no means represent the majority. I mean, the majority of students, especially at a um, ladder climbing, uh, you know, uh, uh, legal professional school uh, at a place like in, in Washington, D.C., like Georgetown, the vast majority just want good jobs and get networked and, and what have you. But the the very vocal uh, minority who is you know, are cowing their uh, classmates uh, often, uh, you know, uh, peer pressure to, to sign letters and make denunciations. It's kind of a Maoist sort of uh, unhealthy uh, campus culture. They pressure administrators as well. And we've seen um, around the country in different contexts that uh, if administrators from the beginning uh, stand up for due process or free speech or other policies that are well considered and well written, and most schools actually do have on paper, uh, good policies, then they put down the the unrest uh, fairly quickly. Um, but uh, if they if they try to kowtow, it's um, it doesn't help them, frankly. And I think uh, Dean Trainer is probably facing that right now. He kicked the can down the road four years, uh, sorry, four months. It felt like four years. <laughs> right. uh, and now, uh, as I'm you know writing my Wall Street Journal op ed and talking about getting ready to go and host a a diversity of thought in my classroom and that everyone's welcome and will be treated equally. He's being uh, pilloried by those same woke activist groups. Uh, um, I don't know if you've, uh, if your producers found the the latest black law students association tweet and statement from late last night. Um, But if anything, it's even more uh, strident than, um, than what you just read. Yeah. They're essentially saying we never, we never 
you know, we're basing our complaints on him being an actual Georgetown employee. Um, they're not satisfied. They 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 want to scalp. And, you know, and, and we've, they, we've, they have a demand for the dean to define exactly where the line is between conservatism and racism, as if that's the spectrum. Uh, at a certain point, they <laughs> criticize the dean for uh, calling my tweets as attacking females, black females, where there's some there's some uh, nomenclature dispute over female and woman. I, I might have to consult a biologist to understand yeah. what that's all about. There, there are none, especially on the sitting Supreme Court. And, and the, the the justice who was then later nominated doesn't know either. Speaking of black women. Um, so, the by the way, that, I think she's qualified to be on the Supreme Court. Let, of course let's she at is. the outset yes, make course. clear that my tweet in no reasonable world can be interpreted as saying as no black women are qualified to be on the Supreme Court, which is how those acting in bad faith uh, willfully misconstrued it to propagate this uh, this attack. No, as compared to Katanji Brown Jackson, I am a lesser white woman. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, and a potential <laughs> seat on the Supreme Court. I don't have anything like her credentials or experience. That's what you were trying to say. It didn't have anything to do with really your an objection on your part to race or to gender. It was that you were getting somebody lesser than the guy I think he should choose. And it's sad that this guy won't even be considered because he doesn't have the right, you know, gender and he doesn't have the quote right even though he's a member of a racial minority group and an immigrant but yes uh, but not the preferred not the preferred so this is where things got really crazy it was already crazy so this whole story's already gotten so out of hand but then (laughs) i'm sorry to laugh Ilya, but you gotta laugh a little then they had like sit-ins at georgetown law over you and we played some of this because national review got their hands on some of the tapes and it was just you you couldn't believe your eyes it was like yeah i I think i made nate hokeman's career there at national review the young young writer who's like on the shapiro beat the last few months (laughs) well it was shocking stuff it was like wait what did he do again you know like what what exactly did he do they had meetings with dean trainer uh he was front and center in all of this He, he this is actually um from from Nate, from Nate Hochman's uh, reporting, a chastened looking trainer spent more than an hour answering questions from what appeared to be the Black Law Students Association leadership team in a closed auditorium. The dean, striking an apologetic tone, echoed the language of the activists in the crowd, assuring the assembled students that he was appalled by the painful nature of Shapiro's tweets and promising to listen, learn and ultimately do better. And we have actually clips of that where one of the students demanded reparations for the time they missed in class to attend the sit-in and a free lunch. Here's a bit of that. Sot one. And in terms of coming back to this reparation thing, because like this is this is great, but we have to do so much work to catch up for all this stuff that we missed. All I'm saying is, I don't know if it's a, a couple dinners or lunches, or lunches <laughs> but that would help us because we like we can't. I can't go home for lunch now because I need to study. I have to I have to make up for this class that I lost. So it's little things like that. It doesn't have to be something that takes a year to figure out. It's like to, we know our black students or whatever group is hurting, and we're going to give them things today, whether it's snacks, whether it's counseling, whether it's whatever. But the part of that trust is to see an immediate reaction to what we are saying. The food will be great. (laughs) (laughs) We have food on the way. Okay, stand by, because there's the next soundbite was about the the one gal demanding cry rooms. (laughs) I'm sorry, but we need tougher people. Like, if you're going to be a lawyer, you've got to have a thick skin. I mean, and there's no fucking think, crying in litigation. <laughs> Sorry. You would think, you would think in, legal, in a legal career, you're going to face more challenging uh, issues than uh, a speaker who offends you or, or a, a tweet that you think, uh, you know, correctly or not, is racist. Are the high fuel costs putting a damper on your summer vacay plans? From higher prices at the pump to a jump in airfare, it's definitely getting more expensive to get away for a week. But what if you could soak up those vacation vibes year round? Get a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. Whether you want to stay close to home this summer or just want to extend your break, a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas can transform your backyard into an oasis. It combines the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. This is going to reinvent family time. You'll love it and your family and friends will too. 
Michael Phelps swim spas by Master Spas come in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a small one. And since it's heated, you can use it year round in any climate. Michael Phelps swim spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. Check it out by going to masterspas.com. Put in the promo code MK and that will save you $1,000 on your Michael Phelps swim spa or $500 on your Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.